السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سألي in the morning uh, getting ready to go to Karbala heaven on earth so just got all that stuff loaded into the taxi and just the final little bits now and join us over the next few few days inshallah we'll try to get some footage and uh, put together like a little vlog for you guys inshallah so you can come along and you can experience the art with us we'll be due to fly in today to Najaf uh, we fly to Istanbul, from Istanbul we fly then into Najaf insha'Allah um, I don't think we're going to stay in Najaf, we're literally just going to go straight to Karbala and then we're going to stay in Najaf for like a week afterwards after Ashwara insha'Allah, after Ashwara so yeah, got the keys enjoy me on this little journey guys Yalla, Bismillah Bismillah ar-Rahman Abbas, Ben Haramayn, and Adam Abu Hussein alayhi salam. Bear with us on these forthcoming nights where we'll be sharing clips of different majalis. Inshallah, we'll be showing you different insights from inside the holy city of Karbala over the 10 days of Muharram, inshallah. Alaikum. Today is day five of the ten days of Ashur Muharram. We are again in Bain al Haramain. We will be sharing, inshallah, some of the jewels that are coming through. So, in this clip here, you can see uh, I'm in Bain al Haramain and there's a, a group coming through that are hitting themselves with uh, chains on their back. This practice is known as Zanjir. Uh, this is something that symbolizes how the family of Imam al Hussein, like the children, the women, uh, and his son, were whipped by the enemies of Allah and by the enemies of Imam al Hussein um, after the Battle of Karbala. It's something that the Shias they do in sympathy or in empathy to show their, their mourning and their willingness or their drive to feel the pain of those who experienced the Battle of Karbala. Um, something that's practiced by young and old as you can see in the video the generations uh, different generations that are here is something that although some people frown upon uh, from other schools of thought it's something that the Shias hold quite dearly to themselves. Uh, it's a form of azar or a form of mourning, uh, one of the many forms that we have. Uh, you'll notice some people also striking their chest. Uh, this was known as latum or matum, or uh, you know, there's a number of different names for it. So these things are all set for us to try and connect with the victims of the Battle of Karbala, the ones who were oppressed, the ones who were tortured, the ones who were killed. It's our way of grieving and trying to understand and familiarize ourselves with their pain. Uh, something that, you know, when I was growing up, if I saw this, I might have been a bit like, whoa, what's, what's going on here sort of thing. But I think the more you connect to the story of Karbala, the Battle of Karbala, the more you connect to Imam Hussein and Ahlul Bayt the more this becomes a relevant form of expression of grief it's it's not just something you do for the sake of it it's not just something you do and you're just hurting yourself uh, it's something that has a deep spiritual and, and even emotional uh, connection that I think if you were to witness it yourself or if you used to become a lot closer and understand it yourself it would be something that you yourself would and also potentially practice.
atmosphere here tonight is, is unreal. It's, you can feel the, the sorrow, you can feel the pain. You can see the eyes are everywhere. It's just the most unreal feeling. Like, I can't explain it. I just wish that Charlie you will get the chance to experience this. So you know what I'm talking about. So I wasn't able to get too much filming done in Karbala. Uh, so I'm sure you guys can appreciate it was Ash uh, There was a lot going on. It's very busy. Uh, there was a lot of places we were unable to take our phones um, for a number of reasons. So unfortunately, it's very limited footage I've got. Inshallah, you guys would have already seen. Alhamdulillah, we made it to Najaf. Uh, we prayed Fajr this morning. We just stayed here in Maharam, just waiting for the sun to rise. I just read Da'a and Ziyara. You know, this is a place where, I don't know how to explain it, Najaf is one of those places where nothing in the world matters. There's no nothing from the dunya that, that affects your brain. Be it family issues, financial issues, you know, anxiety, depression, whatever it may be. You're sitting in front of Amir al-Mu'minun alayhi salam, it's, it's a different thing altogether. So, inshallah, I'm going to take you on a, a little tour just for a while. Inshallah, I'll show you a little bit of Najaf that we do get to see. Inshallah, but in the now we'll have a chance to, to go see Mashallah Sahla and Mashallah Kufa, inshallah, over the next forthcoming days. But we'll be sure to share that with you uh, if Allah gives us the, the permission, inshallah. So, in this clip here, uh, you can see that. Um, I start off in the the courtyard of uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam and then make my way in towards the the the, or the, the grave itself, the, the place of of the burial of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Uh, it's something that you know is is very personal, very very emotional is it when you sit in Najaf for me personally it's a very tranquil feeling it's you know there's no matters of the dunya that seem to come to mind there's no thinking of what am I going to do or what am I going to eat later or I need this or I need that it's very much a feeling of just tranquility ah, this could just be myself but this is my personal view on it as you can see I take my camera through at certain points they don't allow cameras so I had to hide my phone a little bit um, however as I'm walking through you might notice that there are also grave processions going through so um, people who die in, in and around Iraq uh, sometimes you know they might be local to Najaf or maybe from the outskirts or from other cities in Iraq and they'll bring the bodies into the shrine of Imam Ali alayhi salam or into the burial place of Imam Ali alayhi salam and they will take the graves around um, they will recite la ilaha illallah you know this, this person has passed away and let this person have one final or maybe even their first visitation uh, of Imam Ali alayhi salam before they generally speaking go bury them in Wadi Salam which is where the grave of Imam Ali alayhi salam is just at the top of the road there uh, is Wadi Salam which is the world's largest graveyard uh, this in itself um, is something that is quite common. It's quite a common occurrence that you see there. Uh, you do see it in Karbala, but it's a lot more prevalent there in Najaf itself. Uh, it's something that's deeply, you know, deeply emotional. So one thing I'd probably mention, um, for all those of you that want to come for Ziyarah for Ashura, is uh, make sure you do your amal. Don't be distracted. Not that don't do your azad, no, don't, don't misinterpret my words. 100% do your azad. Cry for Hussein, hit yourself for Hussein, strike yourself for Hussein. Don't ever let the azad of Imam Hussein alayhi salam die ever. But don't sideline your a'mal either. You know, let this be not only a time for mourning, but a time for spiritual uplifting, a time for a reconnection with your imam, a time for you know having that, that love and that passion that you have throughout the year letting that resemble itself and show itself when you're standing in front of your mola. So, you know, especially when you're coming to Najaf as well. Don't, don't forget the Amir Mu'mir you know, had to had to enjoy his hardships also, although this is time for, for Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Don't forget Amir Mu'mir alayhi salam was, was almost the beginning after, after Rasulullah and after Fatima al 
was a mere about me and I said I'm not drugs, so, so let us not forget that when we're here, remember he's Messiah about as well, he's Messiah. And let us not forget that one thing I think is very important for everyone to understand, for everyone to really take on board is that when you're doing ziyara, there's not that, but there's, there's akhlaq towards your ziyara. There's a way you should maintain yourself, whether that be the way you dress, you know, always wearing clean clothes, the way you smell, making sure you have atar on, you know, at least you smell clean, um, the way that you conduct yourself, especially when you're going in towards the haram. I don't, I don't know if those of you who have been for ziyara before, you'll notice that people tend to push quite a lot. And, and obviously the, the love of their master has, has made them insane. But there's no doubt, there's, there's a khlag to these things, you know. If, if you can see that somebody is uncomfortable, you can see that it's causing discomfort not to yourself, but maybe to other people, well, don't, don't act in that way. Maybe take a step back. If, if you touching the dhari of that imam comes at the expense of causing discomfort to someone else, you have to ask yourself, is it really worth it? Well, uh, that's the only thing I'd say for, for all the army, is just to make sure that you know, you, you sort of not just thinking about yourself, you know, but also considering the others around you. Don't lose the akhlaq of ziyara. It's not something that I am able to So for those of you who haven't been to Najaf before, maybe have been but haven't discovered this part, this is off the back of the residency of most of the students of knowledge. And this is where you'll find the majority of bookstores in Najaf. A uh, wide variety of books from Quran to Tafsir, Ta'qaid, uh, children's books, adult books, pretty much anything you can think of. Yeah, just endless anyway, it just goes on and on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we're back in London now. Uh, we just got back from Ziara. It's, uh, it's, it's depressing to be back. This time I'm sitting in front of Amir Mu'min Ali Salam. Oh, here I am back in London. It was definitely an experience. I recommend anybody who hasn't been for Ziyara, or even hasn't even been for, or maybe they've been for Ziyara, maybe you've been for Ziyara, but you've never been for Ashram Haram. I highly recommend, inshallah, just, just witnessing the 10 days of Muharram, the first 10 days of Muharram in Karbala itself it's, um, it's something else altogether it's, 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 it's an experience, it's beautiful you can really feel the emotion come alive you know, you can really put yourself, physically put yourself in those places and you know, the, the tragedy and the, the battle becomes so, more, so much more real you know, you can, you can see it you can smell it, you can feel it, you can touch it, you know, and then, yeah, it is crazy, it is crazy. Karbala is, is always beautiful, period, like it doesn't matter what time of year you go, it's always beautiful. But to experience it of Ashram Haram has a whole, whole new, different feeling, a whole new different vibe to it. So, yeah, I, I, I tried to get as much video as I could. Um, unfortunately, there's other things that proceeded that I had to give uh, priority to. But I, I tried to get a couple of bits, so inshallah, you guys can forgive me. I hope you enjoy the vlog. And uh, inshallah, subscribe to the Purified Truth channel and make the most and enjoy it. So, yeah, like I said, forgive me. Unfortunately, I became quite ill over the last few days or four or five days in the Jeff and uh, that kind of preoccupied my time a lot bit so I forgive me I couldn't share more with you. Yeah like I said share share this video around uh, like and subscribe to the Purified Truth channel and comment below any experiences that you guys might have had whilst I was young and inshallah share those experiences for everyone else to see. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh